Hello everyone. Okay, several of you have asked me if I would uh, generate a, an Excel version of the Gini Index. So there's one already out there on the Lorenz Curve called the Lorenz Curve in Excel. It's in uh, YouTube. And um, so now I'm going to try to generate uh, the Gini Index for you. But uh, before we do that, maybe a little uh, trivia might help you. Uh, this is the original article. It's the original article that uh, M. O. Lorenz published that uh, got all this started about the Lorenz curve in 1905. And a piece of trivia that you might not know is that uh, he became quite famous for this, but this is an article he published when he was in graduate school, not later in his professional career. So I think back on my career, I don't have any articles that I published in uh, graduate school at all, much less any that somebody is reading. Uh, this guy here is uh, Corrado Jenny, he's the guy that decided to uh, summarize this function, the Lorenz curve, into uh, an index um, that we can use. And uh, his idea was simply to take the area bound by the line of equality and the Lorenz curve and get a ratio of this area A to the ratio of this triangle that's described by the line of equality and down this side over here, this right triangle. Now, in this particular graphic, I've uh, done it in percent, which uh, now that I look back on it is unfortunate. It would be a lot better to do this in a decimal, so this should range from 0 uh, to 1, not 100 percent, and from 0 to 1 this way. And that way you can see very simply that uh, the Gini coefficient, or the Gini index, is simply the area A bounded by the line of equality in the Lorenz curve, and then divided by this right triangle but the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height and since this is one and that's one the area of this triangle would be 0.5 so uh, to repeat the Gini index or the Gini coefficient is area A divided by 0.5 or area A times 2 so that's how it's done but here's the here's the mechanical problem that occurs when you move from the theoretical Gini index to actual real world data in real world data, you don't have a continuous function like I have it drawn here. What you have are little line segments of data. So in this particular example, there are five pieces of data. One, two, three, four, five. And so this line is not a, a nice curve uh, function that we could describe with an algebraic equation. It's a series of little line segments that have little dis, uh, you know, discontinuous points on them. So the question becomes, well, how do we find area A? And there are two options. One is to always take the higher end of these little rectangles. So this would be the first rectangle bounded by that dotted line. This would be the second one. This would be the third one and so forth. And I hope you can see that if you do it that way, you will underestimate area A. The second option is to take the lower bound. So the first rectangle would be zero. The second rectangle would be this little box right here. The third rectangle would be this little box right here, and so forth. And if you do it that way, I hope you can see that you will overestimate area A. So the only way to avoid that bias is to just take the average of the low bound and the high bound of each one of these rectangles. And you'd think, well, okay, that's a good idea, but actually it's a perfect idea. Because remember, these are line segments. It's not a curve in here at all. And so when you take the average across there, you are actually calculating the area that falls below the Lorenz curve. Okay, so let's get started. So here's the data that's sitting out there in that other YouTube uh, video uh, called Lorenz curve in Excel. And I've just uh, retyped it in and this is uh, the curve. And over here in this little space we want to work on calculating the Gini index. So the first thing I need to do is try to figure out the area under the Lorenz curve, this part down here. It's kind of easy to find. So uh, the first one would be, uh, think about uh, this is the high bound, this number right here. That's the top of the first rectangle. I'm going to add the bottom of the first rectangle to it, which is of course 0. Add them together, divide by 2. Now I have the mean of the high bound and the low bound of the first rectangle. And that whole mess I need to multiply by the width. Now I'm going to do a little shortcut in mind because I know I have eight observations. See them over here? There's eight of them, all equally weighted. So uh, 
each of them has one eighth of the total, and one eighth is 0.125. So, for example, if you had a study with 10 observations, the width of all of your rectangles would be 0.1. If you had 20 observations, the width of all your rectangles would be 0.05, and so forth. So that's the uh, area of the first smallest rectangle, and here's the next one, and the next one, and so forth. It would look like that. Okay, and then down here, let's just sum them up. So this number here, 0 0.260392, is this area down here below the Lorenz curve. And what we really need is its opposite. We need this area in here, area A. But it's easy to get. If this is all in decimal, then this area up here is just 0.5 minus this stuff down here. So I know the whole thing is 0.5. I'm going to subtract this thing that I know, and what I have left over will be this. So area A is simply 0.5 minus what we found under the Lorentz curve. Okay, and then the Gini index, of course, is area A divided by 0.5. So there's my Gini x, 0.479217 for this data. Now let's move this data around a little bit to see if it's uh, robust and that I haven't made an error. So let's imagine that uh, there's only one rich guy, this number eight person, has got $150,000 and everybody else is just uh, barely living on five thousand dollars a year so we're going to change this guy to five thousand and notice what happens to our Lorenz curve right and our Gini index got a little worse so put this guy at five thousand watch the Gini index see it's going up five thousand for this guy 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 and now this we've quite exaggerated the inequality and our Gini index is quite large. If we uh, make this number eight guy really rich, let's say he's got uh, 150 million dollars, be nice. Now it's unbelievably big and the Gini index is getting larger and larger. And at the limit, the Gini index would approach one because the Lorenz curve will just crawl along this axis and then shoot up at the very last person and area A would be exactly equal to the area of the triangle. Now let's back all that out, go back to where we were. By the way, there's one difference in uh, this YouTube video and the one I posted before, is I took out that smoothing function that's in the original so that the Lorentz curve looked nice and smooth before. I took that out because, you know what, that's, that's not really uh, correct. They're really little tiny line segments. And if you look closely at this, you can see that they're there. That's not a smooth function. Those are little line segments. Okay, so we, we did the case of where uh, there was tremendous inequality. Let's go the other way. Let's imagine everybody is kind of equal. So in this case, uh, that guy's got 5,000. This guy has 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 5, now for this eighth guy, just so that we can get some definition, let's imagine he's a little bit richer. Maybe he's got 6,000. Now it should be when I hit enter that this Lorenz curve is going to jump way up here and be almost on this blue line. And the Gini index should get very close to zero. So here we go. Yeah, and so now our Gini index is 0 0.021341. And our Lorenz curve is almost laying directly on top of the blue line. So let me back out of all this stuff. There you go. And uh, there I am. So I hope you found this helpful. And uh, I hope uh, you can use this template to uh, solve your own problems with the Lorenz curve and the Gini index. OK, good luck.